but some of the things that we see here in the ICU are beyond words. You know, there's emotional connections to families, there's emotional connections to the patients. Sometimes we forget about what we actually do. When they go through a really rocky time or we lose somebody that is unexpected, especially somebody that's young that hasn't lived out their life, it can hugely be uh, emotional. This is kind of a special picture because this was taken on the last trip that Bill and I were able to travel on before he was diagnosed with ALS. In fact, we were in England and during this trip is when we noticed he started limping and uh, he didn't know why and I didn't know why and we got back home. He started visiting doctors. The gentleman that I speak of was a uh, CEO of Infinity. Uh, he's laying in a bed helpless with Lou Gehrig's disease. And being in that position, having someone having to wait on you hand and foot and not being able to control anything below your neck was pretty eye-opening to me at that particular time in my career. He said when this happened to him, he just said, well, you know, I didn't say why me. He said, I said, why not me? And I, I was pretty amazed because I didn't know if I could ever say that myself. I came in to, the, to start my day and his caregiver turned his machine around. And basically what he did was, through a laser pointer on his glasses, was able to communicate and type on a keyboard. It was called a Dynavox. Well, Bill was at the point where he really had, could not use his arms or his legs. There was two pages of, of typing. And he detailed pretty much everything from the, what I did from day one. I know, Bill was very uh, good about communicating. And then, uh, ended it with your new friend. So unfortunately, when I wrote him back, uh, I found out later through his wife that he had passed. You know, perhaps Bill's nurse, Jared Carter, said it best in a note that he sent to Nancy, and I quote Jared. It astounded me that he was so positive and how he had such a bright smile, even with such a debilitating disease. I'm trying. I'll get it together. I think that if if a nurse uh, or anybody would look at the patient as more than just a patient, but try to look beyond just them as a patient, but as the person they are. When you're bought in 100% to a patient, their family, you can be drained. And I could see a benefit to having, especially on those rocky ones, someone to talk to. There's nothing that I can say or write that will ever replace the situation. You look back sometimes and you think, gosh, I should have done this or I should have done that, but I think you try to do the best that you can do. And there's one of the reasons you gotta be ready to fly.